Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to take part in this panel together with such eminent speakers. Uh, and we've already heard a lot of thoughtful comments regarding the added value of the macro-regional approach. So my contribution to this discussion uh, will focus specifically on the macro-regional cooperation in the area of societal security. Over the past few years, MSB has been able to gain some very valuable first-hand experience of the dynamics of macro-regional cooperation. We have, for example, been involved in one of the flagship projects, 14.3, on macro-regional risk scenarios, which has now been finalized. And since February of this year, MSB is also priority area coordinator, together with the Council of the Baltic Sea State Secretariat, CBSS, for one of the new priority areas in the action plan called SECURE. So this gives us an opportunity uh, to carry on with some of the very pr promising activities from the previous projects. But before I start with my comments, let me just say a few words about the agency that I represent, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, or MSB. MSB has a very broad responsibilities in the area of societal security. We cover a wide spectrum uh, of risks and threats, ranging from IT incidents to health threats, extreme weather events, and uh, CBRN security. Uh, we are also active in all phases of contingency management before, during and after, and we operate both nationally and internationally, ma internationally mainly upon request of the UN or the EU. MSB is also the national contact point for the European Civil Protection Mechanism and for the European Cooperation in the Area of Critical Infrastructure Protection, EPSIP. Okay, so now back to my comments. Um, let me start with the fundamental question of what macro-regional cooperation on societal security has to offer us. Why is it worthwhile to invest time and resources in this form of cooperation? Well, my simple answer would be to point to the various risks and threats surrounding us. What we find if we look around us long enough is that most of our major risk scenarios today and in the future involve critical flows of different kinds. Flows that reach both across sectors and across national borders. Flows of energy, essential goods, information, people, the good flows that we, of course, want to protect and safeguard. But we also find the nasty ones flowing across our borders. The viruses, both human and digital, extreme weather, uh, illegal and hazardous substances, criminality. So about 10 years ago, uh, in the wake of 9-11, it became very popular to use the expression, it takes a network to beat a network. Even if this way of thinking has become rather commonplace, at least in our digital, internet-based societies, the expression still holds true. We do need a network-based approach to cope with most risks and threats today. So why cooperation on this macro-regional level in this context? Well, a broad answer to that question would be that we need all the transboundary cooperation we can get to manage our flow security including also the macro-regional cooperation. A more nuanced answer would perhaps be that macro-regional cooperation actually has something unique to add, with complement, which complements other forms of uh, multilateral cooperation. What we find in a region such as the Baltic Sea region is uh, a rather tight web of uh, human, geographical, functional, political, and historical relationships that provide a rather specific basis for cooperation on risks and security. Mm -hmm. One of the important objectives for our work in priority area secure will be to explore this web and see how we can strengthen the interoperability uh, of civil protection authorities in the region. We want to establish a better overview of existing cooperation arrangements 
and to continue our efforts to map and assess the macro-regional risk scenarios. This work will be tightly knit to the existing European cooperation in the area of civil protection. There is, of course, uh, also a need to work closely with other priority areas uh, to exchange ideas and best practices. I'm thinking about uh, priority area safe and the HELCOM cooperation that we heard about by Helle Pilsgård, uh, but also priority areas such as agri and health, as uh, well as the different horizontal actions. In order to promote exchange and dialogue between macro regions, we have also invited our colleagues working in our sister PA under the EU strategy for the Danube region to attend our next uh, steering group meeting. As I mentioned before, uh, macro regional cooperation on societal security does make a lot of sense, but at the same time it's challenging. We have a lot of common in this region but there are also differences uh, that we must be aware of and uh, address openly. Our perceptions of risks are not the same. We're organized differently, and we use different approaches and terminologies. This can really give uh, rise to some healthy friction. But an important tool uh, to overcome some of these obstacles and find the common ground is uh, joint tra training, many different levels. So one new such uh, flagship initiative uh, for Priority Area Secure is to launch uh, the Baltic Leadership Program focused on societal security. This program, was, which is supported by the Swedish Institute, will target future leaders in civil protection and provide many opportunities to address intercultural aspects of cross-border cooperation. And if it turns out well, I'm convinced that this uh, initiative can serve as a model for other emerging macro regions. So, dear participants, before I end this intervention, I just want to add a few words on the link between cooperation on societal security, risk reduction, and smart and sustainable growth. In 2015, the United Nations International Strategy on Disaster Reduction will update their international framework for disaster risk reduction, also called the HIOGO Framework for Action, for those who are familiar with this. And one of the issues uh, that will be in focus is uh, the critical role of uh, investments in DRR, disaster risk reduction, for promoting economic growth and sustainable development. This revised HFA framework will be launched in Japan. A good choice, actually, considering Japan's long history of severe natural disasters, including, of course, the Fukushima in 2011. In fact, the whole Southeast Asian region has been badly hit by all these mega disasters. And I'm sure you are all aware about uh, the terrible news on the impact of the tr tropical cyclone uh, Haiyan, a nightmare, mare, really. And I heard this morning that it was the 25th one uh, that hit the region since the beginning of this year, and there are 16 more to come. What I find very inspiring is, and relevant also for our work in, in the Baltic Sea region, is that the countries in these disaster-prone areas have been able to draw so many interesting conclusions from their catastrophic experiences. One example that I would like to share with you is the huge mapping effort that started re recently involving 10 ASEAN member states where major risk scenarios are combined with information on nodes for critical infrastructure, supply chains, business continuity plans, and the aim primarily to help the private sector make smart investments that are disaster proof. I see this as a very good example of the kind of synergies that you can achieve by working together on risks and flow security in a macro-regional context. Thank you.